Hello, hello, hello. My name is Queen Diva and you're watching the Queen Diva YouTube channel. It is another episode of my PhD journey. It is September 6th, 2024. And it's Friday, Friday. Um, it's Fantabulous Friday, um, as a matter of fact. And it's also Finer Friday. I'm a Zeta Phi Beta Sword Incorporated, Sarar. <laughs> Anywho, I am giving you the update of my PhD progression. I have been studying for the last seven weeks. This is week number eight. And I got an A every time I turned an assignment. Uh, the class that I'm taking is basically it's a class on being the best student you can be at this university. For those of you that are just joining and following me, um, I am studying towards a PhD in education with a specialization in curriculum and teaching at National University. And I started on July 15th, 2024, and I am finishing up my first course this week I have an assignment due on Sunday, and the class will be over by September 12th, and then I will continue on with the next class. Um, I am so excited because it took quite a while for me to get to this point to study. I am an empty nester. I am a recording artist, author, and so many other things, and I kind of put to the back burner my educational goals, and it wasn't until 2019 that I said, you know what, I need to... Get it crack a lack. So <laughs> I started my um, higher, higher educational goal. We'll say graduate. That's probably better. My graduate goals um, in January of 2020. And I worked on my executive MBA at Prairie View a &M University, part of the Texas A&M system. And I received that degree on December 11th, 2021. And I will soon be celebrating oh my goodness my three-year anniversary um, from graduating from that program and it was really amazing because i waited so long to go back it was about 30 years i got my undergrad in 91 and then i had my um, i received my executive mba in 2021 i know i look young blink blink <laughs> But I'm actually 55 years old, and actually next month, on October 10th, I will be 56. So I'm excited, and I'm so thankful that I have really great genes. I can't um, thank my mom and dad enough, and of course, the, my Lord and Savior for creating me through my mom and dad, and I'm um, just thankful that and two, I, you know, over the years, I, you know, wasn't out drinking, smoking, doing drugs. and wasn't, you know, doing none of that. So that really makes a difference on your face and your body and just, you know, just as a person. So anywho, my progression with the PhD is going along lovely. I couldn't be more pleased. I love the program at National University. Uh, everything is on the portal. Anything that I need or I think I may need is in and, you know, is within the website. They got an area for you to connect with other students and teachers, which is called the Commons. There's an area on there for resources or anything you need. Uh, you can even book uh, a time with a librarian. So I'm not quite at that stage yet because I just started. It's nice to know that all that's available. And this class is actually a class that pretty much tells you about all those things and shows you how to use the, this is just really annoying me. I'm sorry. <laughs> it shows you how to use all of the various programs and resources and, you know, just different things that you may need now or later uh, during the course of the program. So I am just, all I can say is that I'm enjoying myself. This is week eight and um, I'm going to finish the last assignment is on self-care. The last one was on a research plan. You had to do like a 20 slide PowerPoint presentation of a research plan of what you plan to do, you know, during your progression as a PhD student. I thought that was so amazing. I really wish 
they had something like that in the other programs that I was in because it helps prepare you for what you're going to get into. You know, it, it, it tells us step by step what we are, what's expected of us, who we can go to for help, what's the team of people that we can go to. You know, they didn't really have that at the other schools that I were in, you know, that I attended. Uh, but I just love that they have this learning about what's involved and what you need is the course. And to be told, if I ever get opportunity to be like the president of a school or a dean or a chair or whatever, I'm going to really recommend, like highly recommend that we incorporate in every single major that the very first course or one of the courses that they need to take their first semester is learning how to be the best student they can be at the school and learning about the library, learning about um, areas where they can, you know, the, the student center and, and, you know, where they can go and exercise, the health center, and just all the different things that you need to know about your campus and what's offered on your campus, what you can, you know, what to utilize as a student. That should be a class. That really should be a class. That should be your first A. If you show up, do the work, turn it in on time, do your best. That should be your first A. There should be no reason. Okay. I'm just saying, you know, I'm just saying. But for me, I have to say, I am really enjoying this program. And so this last assignment for this course um, is on self-care. And that's something I am really, really working on because I don't always take the time for self-care. And I am like really reprogramming my brain to do more things for me. And anybody that know, anybody that know, um, it's easier to be concerned about other people. It's easier to take the time and see, oh, you, are you doing okay? Did you eat? Is everything right? Do you need it? You know, it's always a good thing, you know, to, you know, easy to do that for other people. But do you look at yourself in the mirror? Are you okay? Do you need anything? What's going on with you? What do I need to do for you today? I'm reprogramming myself, so I'm so glad that the very last assignment has to do with me just merely writing a journal post about what I do for self-care, what is my ideal uh, plan of action for self-care, and what am I doing to, you know, to lead toward being and doing for myself self-care. So I've been thinking about it all week. I, I get every new assignment on Sunday, and it's Friday. And I was just trying to really figure out what is my ideal of how I should do self-care for myself daily, weekly, monthly, yearly. I never really thought about that. You know, you just do the regular things and just, you know, grooming yourself and, you know, that kind of thing. But what is it that, you know, I want to give myself self-care? So what I've been doing is something as simple as just having a cup of tea. I like tea either with honey or with brown sugar and a little bit of cream and just turning on some soft jazz or or uh, or sometimes just quiet. I just like to listen to the sound of the fan or the air conditioner. But a lot of times I just put on some soft jazz and just kind of be still and just think and reflect and just breathe. I've, I've been doing that a lot lately and it really has been giving me a lot of peace actually. And I journal. I journal every day in what I call a blessing book. It was a a, a journal my daughter Gabrielle of uh, called Gabby Gabs. Um, she gave me a book, just a journal, and I just started this year writing my blessings. So it really has helped me tremendously, especially with this program, because I feel so blessed to finally be doing this. You know, studying toward my PhD. So I just wanted to give you my update on what I'm doing so far. This is week number eight and it's on self-care. And I'll be back again to share with you the next update for the next class. Um, if you like what you're hearing, please subscribe. And if you want to share with others, please, please share with others. I'm trying to get to 1,000 subscribers and I need your help and your support. So if you have any questions too, please post them below.